This video covers Arrhenius acids and bases. By the end of this video, you will have observed some common properties of acids and bases. You should be able to distinguish between an Arrhenius acid and an Arrhenius base, be able to write neutralization reactions, be able to predict the products of a neutralization reaction, and be able to perform calculations with neutralization reactions. Some common properties of acids include the following. They taste sour and can sting the skin. Obviously, we don't taste or touch anything in the lab, so we won't find this out firsthand. They react vigorously with metals to form hydrogen gas, and they conduct elect electricity. They're electrolytes. They contain mobile ions in solution, which conducts electricity. Some everyday examples of acids are citric acid in lemons and other citrus fruit, and acetic acid in vinegar. Vinegar is just a solution that contains water and acetic acid. Some properties of bases. Bases taste bitter. Again, don't taste anything in lab. They feel slippery. Again, don't touch anything in lab. They don't react with metals like acids do. And they also, like acids, conduct electricity. They are also electrolytes because they contain dissolved ions. Some everyday examples of bases include drain cleaner and hand soap. There's lots of definitions of acids and bases. We'll start with the definition presented by Arrhenius. An Arrhenius acid is a substance that produces H plus ions in solution. An Arrhenius base is a substance that produces OH minus ions in solution. There's Arrhenius down there in the corner. Some common Arrhenius acids and bases are listed here. Notice that Arrhenius acids have formulas that tend to start with an H and Arrhenius bases have formulas that tend to end with an OH. When we combine an acid and a base, we get a special kind of double replacement reaction called a neutralization reaction. A neutralization reaction is an acid-base reaction where just enough strong base is added to completely react with a strong acid. The general form of these reactions is as follows. A strong acid plus a strong base yields a salt and water. Remember, salt here refers to any ionic compound, not just NaCl. And neutral solutions will have a pH of 7. More on pH later. Let's look at a particle diagram for a neutralization reaction. This will show the reaction between HCl, a strong acid, and AOH, a strong base, to form water and NaCl. Here you see the HCl and the NaOH combining. We have a double replacement reaction occurring with the H plus and the Na plus switching places to give us H2O and NaCl. The net ionic equation for a neutralization reaction would just be the OH minus ion plus the H plus ion yielding liquid water. Here's some neutralization reactions I'd like you to practice writing. Pause the video here and see if you can write double replacement reactions between the acid and the base to form a salt and water. When you come back, I'll reveal the answers. Welcome back. Here's what you should have gotten. Now let's do some stoichiometry with acid-base reactions. Here's a few practice problems to try. We'll do the first one together. Looking at the first problem, we'll are asked to calculate the volume of a 0.1 molar HCl solution needed to neutralize 25.0 milliliters of a 0 0.350 molar NaOH solution. Remember the key here is that for something to completely be neutralized, we must have equal moles of H plus and OH minus. In other words, all of the NaOH would need to have been reacted with HCl. So we need to start by writing a balanced equation. Here's our balanced equation, NaOH plus HCl yields NaCl plus H2O. Then we need to determine the moles of known solution used. Our known solution in this case is NaOH because we know both the volume and the molarity. Using the molarity equation, I plug in my molarity and my liters, and I calculate the moles of NaOH I have. I get 0 0.00875 moles of NaOH. From there, I can use the mole ratio from the balanced equation to determine the number of moles of unknown present, in this case, the HCl. 
since I have a ratio of one mole of NaOH for every one mole of HCl. In order to completely neutralize 0 0.00875 moles of NaOH, I'll need to add 0 0.00875 moles of HCl. Finally, I need to calculate what volume of 0.1 molar HCl will give me that many moles. Again, using the molarity equation, here I plug in the molarity of HCl and the number of moles I need and calculate the volume. Doing so gives me a value of 0 0.0875 liters of HCl. Converting to milliliters, because that's a more convenient unit, I get 87.5 milliliters of HCl needed to completely neutralize 25 milliliters of 0 0.350 molar NaOH. Here's two more to try on your own. Pause the video here and work through these in your notes. When you come back, I'll reveal the answer. Note that in number three, we don't have a one-to-one -one ratio. You're going to need to consider a different mole ratio, so this one's a little trickier. Welcome back. Here's what you should have gotten. Notice, as I said before you left, the number three had a two-to-one mole ratio between acid and base because we had two H pluses in our acid for every one OH minus in our base. That brings us to the end of this video. Let's review our goals. First, we observed some common properties of acids and bases. Then, we learned how to distinguish between our Henius acids and our Henius bases using H plus for acids and OH minus for bases. Then, we learned to write neutralization reactions. Acid plus base yields salt and water. Predict the products of a neutralization reaction. And finally, we looked at how to perform calculations with neutralization reactions.